Ito na mga training ko. Hindi kita ako yung mga mukha nyo. So, <laughs> I'm a full stock web developer from Magenic Manila. Uh, also a certified uh, Braco developer. So, currently 6 lang kami dito sa Philippines. Well, based lang yan. Uh, so, if you need to, I uh, want to get in touch with me, um, Facebook. So, marami dito mga nag-miss Facebook pag may mga question related sa Boy Buhay, ang gilaan yan. Marami ang mga ayon lang dyan. Uh, just tech sa YouTube, paki-search na lang. I'll be uploading some contents soon. So, please uh, subscribe kayo doon. Ano na yung video mo? Ang <laughs> <laughs> apat pa lang eh. Ang video. And link in. So, yan. Yung mga uh, networks ko. Professional. Uh, so, I've been um, talking about building SEO-friendly application with Angular Universal. So, who among you um, built an Angular app or even, not even Angular app, um, uh, using different frameworks like Vue, React, AngularJS. Sino yung nakakagawa ng mga app na ganun? So, um, sa, or kahit hindi kayo gumamit ng framework, yung mga app na ginawa nyo, um, are you familiar with SEO? or search engine optimization. All right, so for those who are not familiar with um, uh, search engine optimization, uh, search engine optimization is the um, algorithm that um, browsers use to index your um, web application. So uh, search engine have crawler bots, we can crawler bots. So it index your application, application search for um, meta tags like title, description, and then, um, other details. So what's the use of that? So if you don't have a uh, meta tags in your web application, uh, people will not be able to search your um, website or web application on the internet. Okay. <coughs> so um, commonly, when you're using a um, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript framework, uh, most JavaScript framework doesn't support uh, server-side rendering, which helps um, building an SEO-friendly application. So, if you're using like PHP, .NET, you can uh, do server-side rendering on that since that's uh, the, the application is uh, built on server-side. But for JavaScript framework, uh, it doesn't. And uh, crawler bots um, doesn't read uh, JavaScript, so it only reads plain HTML. So, when they see your website and get the page and then it only sees the um, javascript it won't be able to get those details but um i think chrome um chrome bots is smart enough to to do the um to parse the javascript but other browser uh, like yahoo bing safari uh, sorry uh bing and yahoo search engine uh, doesn't know or at least i from what i know uh, can't read uh, javascript Alright. So what you will learn in this talk is what's Angular Universal, how to add data tags and why it is important. How to make your web apps SEO friendly and then um, using Angular Universal for server side rendering. So Angular Universal is the project to enable server side rendering of Angular. So Angular Universal is not a build inside the Angular application. It is a side project of uh, Angular, which they saw before uh, has a lot of potential to do server-side rendering. And then they, um, after they saw the um, the uh, communities requesting for it, and then they started um, supporting the uh, Angular Universal project. So core team from Angular, um, Google. They um, engage in the project and then start um, engaging. So they help the uh, person who built Angular Universal. So Angular Universal is the idea that you can run Angular entirely on the server side. So with Node or ASP or PHP. And then render the entire site of the state of the application out of a string and then serve it. So basically, um, it compiles your application and then return it in the browser as a string, not a JavaScript. So think of it as your index.html being served as a single line of string so that um, bots can read it. 
So yun, it is updated to make all the static things in the rendered HTML live and interactive. So under Universal, uh, allows you to do server-side rendering, optimize for search engine, and then scrapers. So, alam nyo may scrapers? So, it's the um, more like technology that allows your website to be shared on different social media. So, kapag nag-share kayo ng application nyo sa social media, may kita nyo, may title, may picture, and then may description. So, that's the meta tags being scraped by the um, scraper of, let's say, Facebook uh, or Twitter. So, if you don't, I'll show a sample later um, with app without meta tags and app with meta tags. So, Appreciate load time, um, benefits other than um, SEO, um, SEO search engine um, optimized application, other than scrapers, um, it has perceived load time. So what it is, is uh, perceived load time is the um, concept of uh, loading your application uh, that the user think, or which we think loads, let's say um, the application will uh, have its fully loaded page in let's say five seconds now uh, perceived load time um, serves the entire page in just uh, a second so the user thinks that the application is already fully rendered even though it's not so when do we consider using angular universal um, when our website is out of the pub, out to the public, so uh, let's say in the office we have a we have a ton of Angular application, but most of them are internal, so we don't need uh, to be searched in uh, search engines. We don't need to be shared since those are internal application only. Let's say uh, payroll, bank, banking, financing, all those kinds of apps. Then if we care about social scraping, I mentioned earlier, we want our page to get growth by search engine. And also, if we care about performance. So that's where the perceived load time comes in. Kasi nga, uh, the user thinks na tapos na mag-load, even though it's not. Kasi minakita nyo na yung full page. Eh. So later, I'll also show you um, what it looks like without um, universe, uh, server side rendering. So sample of sites that needs to be SEO friendly. E-commerce. So let's say Amazon is an e-commerce e website. So if you have an e-commerce website and you don't have and you use um, Angular or any JavaScript framework, and then you didn't have a server-side rendering or your application doesn't support um, search engine optimization. Now the question is, how your customer will able to find the products that you sell? Okay. So blog site. Then portfolio service site uh, or similar uh, all application are similar. So these are example of uh, a meta, uh, website uh, without uh, website with meta tags but doesn't have uh, Angular Universal. So I built this application with Angular. This is just a basic um, website. And then. Um, they have, they both have meta tags, so you can see there's a title and description, but they don't have um, server-side rendering. I didn't implement the uh, Angular version on the dev application. So this is what it looks like when I shared it in Facebook. So no picture, no description, no title. Okay. So meta tags, meta tags are Meta elements are typically used to specify page description, keywords, author of the document, uh, less modified than other metadata. But the commonly used are, or what's important is the title description. Right. And then, um, I believe search engine doesn't look for keywords nowadays. Back, back in the day, uh, let's say when the internet is just young, uh, around, let's say, 2000, early 2000, so everyone's um, been using keywords. So if you're familiar with keywords uh, and then you view source the application, you'll see that 
there's a ton of keywords in there. Uh, keep, uh, even though the keywords isn't really related to the uh, website itself. So let's say uh, I have an e-commerce site, right? And then uh, before, um, people just keep putting a lot of keywords like anime or what's trending. So when they search in the um, search engine, uh, their site will pop up. Even though the user search for anime and then your site is an e-commerce e site, but since your site have a keyword for anime, um, there's likely that the um, website will show up in the list. So, um, I think 2010 onwards, uh, search engine doesn't really look at keywords anymore because of that, the keyword abuse. So, the important is title and description. So, meta tags in Angular is a service that can be used to get and add meta tags. So, it was included in the um, Angular 4 major release. So, before in Angular version 2, uh, we need to we don't have the meta tags built in so we have to create our service ourselves just to put a title and description to make it dynamic <coughs> so here's a sample of meta tags um, you can search the meta tags in angular in the official angular document which explains it also explains there uh, how to uh, use it but uh, i don't really use add and update I don't um, use the other because um, I don't automatically update the tags whenever the user change the routes. Um, sample setup. So you get the yeah. so you get the um, meta and title from the platform browser, which is already built in um, the Angular core. And then how to use it is just um, add the Titan and meta in the constructor and then for title you can use set title and then for tags you can use add tags excuse me but um, now I only use uh, I think update tags because um, or if you keep using add tags it will just duplicate the um, the content let's say author then I use add tags again uh, it just create two authors with the same data. So now I just use uh, update tags and then the meta tag service is smart enough to know that it already exists and then just update one. So just that's the basic um, setup. So normally I put it in the constructor um, so that the, once the component is loaded, the data will also be included in the HTML. And then, um, so there's a rule of thumb between um, constructor and um, ng on unit. So if it's um, very light um, load, you can add it in the constructor. But if it's something like that gets data from the database or an API, which takes um, a lot of time and um, service, then uh, put it in the uh, ng on unit. Uh, So here's a sample. So in the left, there's only the title, the default title, which is the when you create an application, you can um, when you create an application with um, ng new using under CLI, you type the name of the application, right? So when you do that, the default title will be the name of your application. So that's also the um, the one shown in the left browser. And then, for this one, I added the um, meta service. So as you can see, the title change when the page load. And then, um, you can see the author keywords and description in the view source. So, um, and then, um, but also, um, the Angular Universal has a, um, I think, library inside it which is called Preboot JS. Um, Preboot. What Preboot does is it records all the user interaction from your application. So, like what I said earlier, 
Um, when you use Angular Universal, the application will load for the first time. And then it perceives the user that the application already loads completely, but it doesn't. So um, pre-boot records all the user interaction. Let's say um, the user click um, the button or type a search in your search um, button. And then once the application completes um, loading, then the pre-boot will um, replay all those actions to actually apply it to your application. So that's what pre-boot um, just uh, pre-boot JS does. Bills back, may nakuha po kayo? Mm. I'll be asking a lot of questions later, so... Ah, <laughs> please prepare. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, mabawi dun sa mga hindi nagtanong. <laughs> so, um, just a quick preview on how to set up server-side rendering. I'll also do a live, live coding later. But just to replicate this, uh, so if you're using server-side rendering, um, by default, already your application should already have a browser module. Um, you just have to add the with server transition, and then you can put any text here. So um, for me, I always use the application name, but you can definitely put anything there. Um, what it does is it tells that your application uses server-side rendering. So, um, for those not for not familiar, um, when you use Angular CLI, it, it already has a app that module that TS. Uh, when you see um, CJ's sample earlier, but now you need to create a separate one for the server-side rendering. So it sits in the same folder as the app module. So app slash app server that module that TS. So the content is similar from your app module but it only has con um, two imports so the app module and the server module which will create later and then the entry point which is the app component so pretty same with the default app module and then um, if your application uses um, lazy load um, you need to add the module map loader module so that the um, server-side rendering knows um, the, the component to load for lazy loading. So for those who's not familiar with lazy loading, um, you see the router that CJ created earlier, right? So I'll show you an example. So, hey. Ito yung salikod? Alright. Alright. So the format of serv uh, lazy load, or first I'll explain what lazy loading does. So lazy loading is a um, feature of Angular um, which configured in the router. So what it does is, uh, it only loads the components and services that your page needs. So, if your application don't use um, lazy loading and you have routes like this, let's say home, about. So, just an example. When your application load, um, all of these components will be um loaded in the or uh, loaded in the browser which is um, sometimes takes time so but if you use um, lazy loading if your page only use two components that's the only um, component that will be rendered or loaded in your Para mabilis, um,
So what I did is I created, like I said, I created a service. So uh, I import the meta title from platform browser <coughs> and then make uh, instantiate it in the constructor then create the default tags so by default if I don't pass anything to the service this will be the default then set the title tag so um, different social media have different uh, meta tags so this um, just the example for Twitter and Facebook so Twitter have Twitter colon then the title description image for Facebook we use OG tags So you can set the title description, the image when you paste the link. And then on this side, they just uh, put the content. Alright. So this is just the service so that all of my pages can reuse this. Instead of me uh, doing the same um, thing in each pages. So how did I use this? So in my... So I import the SEO service. So we have um, create in the constructor. So I get uh, I get detail from the API. So, so if I click view, so I get I do API calls there using the, um, the ID here. So that's the ID one. In here I just get the ID from the URL and then I check if there's a value in the ID I call the service to get the information which is rendered here the image comes from the server the price the name everything comes from the server okay and then once there's data from the API I just pass the um, the data to the tags so the SEO service okay so right now I only have um, title description and image but I can add other things like this if there's a social media that looking for this so I can do that and then it will auto automatically apply in the um, content so for now it's just what we'll be using so that's the basic application of the service so um, if I do inspect, you should see in the head. So you see this, uh, the meta, so the Twitter, then if I go to home, you should render the default. So server side up, the default. And then again, no content on the other tags. Right? So basic application. Now that we did that, I'm ready to set up the uh, right. So me, since I'm just not going to delete my own, I'm just going to share the orders. Papaita ko ng ginawa ko ng application na nakaserver side na. one is the um, already set up okay let's start from the start first we need to create the app server module so can I talk kanina since I'm using lazy mo uh, lazy loading I need to include the um, module map loader module 
And then next is the um, main app module. So before the default is just this maliit. So the default was just this, but since I'm using server-side rendering, I need to tell the application that we'll be using server-side rendering. You can put any string here. Then next is so like I said earlier, we already have a default. We create the application main ts. But we need to create a um, app server for our main that server that is for our service side rendering, which will be used later in the config. Pinaito kanina. So yun yung makala yung tandaan. Then the default um, TS config so uses our main application uses ES2015 for compiling our application. Um, service side rendering or which will be using Node.js will be using CommonJS for compiling which is in uh, UMD format then um, the difference is I only added entry module here so to bootstrap the application that will be using app server module so pretty much all the settings I made here will be the same as yours Uh, after that, we need to go to Angular.json. So, this is the default, the build. This is the um, ng serve settings. Okay, so this is the ng build. This is the ng serve. And then this one is our. Um, server side rendering settings so I added the server here the output path so I added the disk, browser and uh, so by default uh, by default the build is inside the disk disk folder I think only so I changed it to disk browser you can put any um, folder name there there's no issue alright so basically, you can just copy that and then change everything and add that server. Alright, so after that, um, I added a webpack, webpack config. So yung mentioned ko kanina. So this will convert our server. Okay. Let's take a look at the server first, server that TypeScript, which is a um, node application. So, familiar to a node. So, to sa mga hindi pa, um, this will be the same as yours as well. So, nasa docs din to ng official document ng Angular and official document ng Angular Universal. I just checked it earlier and it's already updated with the version 6 uh, setup. Okay? So, just get the tell the application that it's in production mode no one deploys in uh, dev mode uh, this is the lazy, uh, lazy loaded uh, module mapping so nakapat lang yung sang folder so Hindi na ito kailangan actually, wala na yan. Wala sige dyan lang yan. Since this is an API call which is not part of the server side rendering. So this is just a basic setup. And then, in the web pack config, uh, what this basically does is it converts the TypeScript server to JavaScript. Okay. And then gets the um, dependency from node module. So, I just copied this from the document. You should, um, yours should be the same. Uh, if you have extra settings, um, you can study Webpack. I'm not familiar, that very familiar with Webpack. Uh, medyo masakit sa ulo yung Webpack. May kaibigan ako nagkaroon ng Webpack sa so mga ulo. May 3 months, wala pa rin siya natutunan. So, ganun siya ka ano. Kaya, by default, when you use Angular CLI, 
Webpack is already configured for you with the best pack, best practice approach. Okay? So, right now, hindi nyo may kita yung config ng Webpack dyan kasi ayaw nilang pakailaman nyo yun. Alright? Kasi gano'n ka, gano siya kasakit sa ulo. So, basically, yun yung mga file. Webpack server, server.typescript, Angular JSON settings, lalagay nyo lang yung um, setup ng application, very straightforward. Um, TS config yung build settings which should be compiled with CommonJS uh, main.server tells our uh, it only tells our server build to use the um, app main server okay now the last part or the last step is um, the build config so it's optional to put it in here but it's helpful to um, put that there kasi tingnan nyo naman napakadami nyan <laughs> pero kasi dami rin arte ng pangalan pwede ka naman sinabi yung server na lang to diba? para di masyado malaki so i-explain ko na to basic ng build prod lang yung shortcut na to and then uh, run server side yung name ng app and then the, the config which is server uh, webpack and then so ang pinakagamitin lang natin dyan ito which is already calls the uh, build client and server and then run, run the webpack uh, one important note like uh, check out yun sa ano dami yan na lang ito ata sinabi sinabi ko ba yung dependency so ayun yung dependency hindi ko nasabi so kailangan nyo install yun sa application locally so yung platform server hindi siya kasama by default uh, yung ng universal module yung ginamit natin sa uh, node application so ito yun yung typescript loader to, uh, to convert yung sa webpack and then yung angular universal na pang node ulit okay so back to the demo. No. Ay, may tanong. Tapos na ito. Okay, so ang type ko lang is ng ah, para makatotohanan. I'll delete this. Tapos na 'yung error ng no? sorry na lang. this and this alright then ngbuild ssr ngbuild ssr hi sorry So, NPM na pala to. Kasi nirap na natin yung script. SSR. NPM. So, basically, tiran nyo lang yung commands na nalagay natin doon sa script. Kaysa i-type natin yung isa-isa. Pwede nyo naman gawin na. Save nyo sa loob. So, habang nag-build dyan, dapat nag-create ka ng folder dito browser, tapos na siya mag-build for client side, bibuild siya ngayon for uh, server side dapat okay, tapos sa server side, ngayon to convert the webpack yung server natin to from TypeScript to JavaScript so yun na yun, ito yung babasahin ng application nyo Next is yung script natin para maran yung application using server side rendering na. So npm run ulit serve ssr. So kung walang error yung sa inyo, uh, nakalagay dyan is mode server listening to port 4000. Pupunta tayo dun sa port na yun. Ano pa gulo dyan? Ano <laughs> tayo? Nakalos port Tao sa 
Okay, so Ulit tayo dito Ulit na lang So how to verify your application is SSR ready First Check nyo muna if running yung app after ng build Which is natap makita na natin Next is control U to view source So gawin natin yung sabi niya So pag in-expect element natin yan Ayan kita Diyan tayo, paano medyo makatotohan So ayan pag... Eh Ito na Ayan Okay, so nalang kay up Inspect element So, kita diba? Pero pag binu source mo yan Dapat na Control nyo na lang doon. So, view source. May laman siya, di ba? Ngayon, papakita ko yung hindi naka-server side rendering. Tara nga. Bilis lang to. So, sa, kung naka-live siya talaga, guys, may kita nyo na naka-ready na, kompleto na. And then, may kita nyo malaking blanco. Hanggang sa matapos yung app, Mag-i-stop yun na mabilis na hindi mapapansin ng mga user Tsaka yung ipapakita So yung minention ko kanina na pre-boot So let's say uh, Nag-load yung application Nag-click si user dito sa isang product Pero since hindi pa talaga siya totally loaded Yung pre-boot nire-record lang na Tinlink ni user to Nag-type si user dito Ngayon yung sinabi ko naman dito na nag-load siya Papakita niya by default yung complete site Pero hindi pa yung functional So kapag, ni, kapag ni, um, may action yung user, nire-record ni pre-boot yun, nire-record nila na yung nire-record, so blanco yung malaking blanco. And then kapag natapos na mag-load yung site, lalabas yung full picture dito sa dulo, and then iti-trigger ni pre-boot yung mga, may, mga action. So i-replay nyo yun, so kinlik ni user, mapupunta ka na dito. So yun yung, hindi, hindi yung user, hindi yung mapapansin ng user sa sobrang bilis nun. Okay, so yun yung um, performance na parang perceived na eh. So parang fake. Pero, um, there's a study kasi na Google, yung study ng Google na 2 seconds, kag, kapag gano'ng katagal na yung website, most of the time, umalis na yung mga ano, user. So, uh, pero ngayon, hindi naman na siya parang, hindi na accurate yung study kasi medyo mabilis na yung natin. Pero kung, pero kung malaki yung site, para medyo mag-a-kit pero kasi napaka-walang kwenta lang nito napaka-simple lang ang laman eh. pero kung um, real app yan malaki madaming content dyan napaka-basic lang kasi ng content so mabilis lang mag-load hindi nyo ma hindi nyo ma-appreciate yung um, screen time ano ba ba? alright yun na Q&A yay yeah. okay. Q&A okay. so merong ba kayong tanong sa ating speaker Okay. Ito lang ngayon, sir. Ah. Pagka, no, server-side rendering ba, uh, hindi na siya mag-work as spa? Mag-reload na yung page kada na? Hindi. Yan pa rin. So, ang nangyayari, um, server-side render, yung fake, fake, okay. then mag-reload yung app, then, ano na yun, spa. So, static, tapos magiging spa ulit. So, parang, fake lang talaga yung user, para may ma may para, para may ma-search yung mga bots, ma-paste niya yung mga fake data which is the server naman yun. And then yun, sa experience ng user. So actually, uh, ang main purpose talaga ng server-side rendering is for performance sa SEO. Parang bonus na lang yung performance eh. SEO. Parang SEO, for SEO side talaga siya. Questions uh, uh, Supported ba ng PHP? PHP? Hindi ko alam. <laughs> Uh, pero kasi by default kasi parang yung mga server side application mga yun nga PHP, Node, uh, ASP.NET backend kasi yun eh so by default HTML naman yung nire-render nila hindi naman javascript so narinig pa rin yun ang uh, application question uh, questions ayun pag gusto mo mag-top 1 sa mga video ah ah 
hindi ito yon kasi para ba top one yung yung application nyo sa Google first, kailangan nyo nito para lang ma-index kayo at lumabas kayo doon second, you need that SEO guide to put the right description right title para hindi kasi pwedeng kung ano lang nalagay mo doon eh para lang mag number one kayo so uh, may linear may ano may, 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 may SEO guide talaga na gumagawa ng expert So, nagki-keyword research yun kung ano yung magandang nilalagay sa isang description na, na mostly mga commonly search, mga pogi, mga ganon. Yun, yun. Yun pa. Wala? Ako may tatanong. Wala. 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 Wala.